Okay, welcome back. We're going to take a look at how this freehand system is built and how it works. I'm going to show you how this is set up by kind of going backwards. So let's start with the material that's on these actual uh, paint strokes here. So if I dive inside my freehand node and then dive inside to stroke it, again, everything here is, uh, is labeled up pretty well. The two nodes down here that are key, this is the cop net, which I'll show you in a second, and then this is the actual um, shader for these paint strokes here. So let's have a quick look at that. Um, maybe give us a little bit more room. Okay, so just working backwards from the shader itself, it only has three inputs. Um, one is uh, the base color here, that's coming from there. The other is um, the opacity, which is giving us that kind of dry edge on the back. And then the normal map, which gives us um, a little bit of um, additional kind of surface uh, dis uh, surface look. And then down here uh, is one more input, which is the displacement. Um, so basically it's four things that are driving that shader, not three. Um, now each of these uh, setups is actually referring um, to a 2D uh, texture map, which is being created live in COPS uh, in the uh, Copernicus context, basically, a, which is the 2D uh, system. So I'm just going to show you kind of what I mean by that. So this, um, uh, let's see, let's look at the displacement map for a minute here. So this is actually um, my height map here, um, and that is feeding into the displacement. And you can see up here in this file name here, um, this is actually referring back to COPS. So um, we're using the op context, which means that this file isn't really a file. It's actually another place in Houdini um, where the texture map can be found. Um, so that's referring back to that height map in COPS. Um, same thing here for the normal map. It's referring back to COPS. Um, and there is also, um, I think that might be it actually for uh, oh, the image, let's see. Um, yes, there's a diffuse map, which is basically if we use the manual color, um, it's getting that back from COPS. So um, the shader is pretty simple. Uh, again, it's just using those four layers. Just one thing I wanted to um, show while I'm here, because I think uh, it deserves a bit of a shout out. There's actually a bit of this that I really struggled with, and I want to thank good old Adam Swab for helping me figure this out. So if you're in the shader and you dump dive into this, um, uh, Material X uh, cube ramp thing here. You'll see a really elaborate uh, set of nodes here. Um, basically, what I hadn't realized is in this uh, USD Material X shader context, um, a lot of the controls that you might expect to have aren't there. Um, but if you dive inside some of these nodes, unlock them and dive inside, you can find a lot more control. So, big thanks again to Adam Swab. Basically, what this meant was that within the same shader, each of these strokes could actually have its own color palette which is something I really wanted to make sure happens. So let's pack into COPS here and whoops, back into the COPNet. And then you can see here are um, the various sections that output those little maps. So um, if I zoom in here, you'll see this one at the top here is set up for creating the opacity and the, uh, the look and feel of um, this rough edge on the back of the strokes, which you can see over here. And basically it goes through some processing and then it outputs the opacity map here. Um, and the way it's been doing this or is doing this is by using a lot of different noises plus ramp. So if, for instance, you'll see this ramp here, let's control that ramp there, and then this distortion here, which is giving us that edge in the back. This ramp here, um, you may look familiar because back in the controls, um, basically, you control this in the top layer of stroke it. Um, that's where this is getting controlled from. So basically, that interface control is controlling this ramp here inside COPS. And there are lots of different controls in here that are also referring back to COPS. Um, and you can mess around with just sort of trying to find those and see how, uh, how they fit. Anytime you find a reference like this, that means that um, that node control, that parameter, is actually being controlled somewhere else. Um, in most cases, it will be by the stroke it interface itself. So um, have a dig around in here, have a look at what, how, kind of how this is working. Um, we have color here, which is the whole color setup. There are actually two versions of this because one is the manual color where you can type it in yourself. Um, and the other is the, um, what I'm calling the color logic system, um, which I set up where basically um, we're outputting a mono color from here and then those colors are being added in the shader. Uh, using some other controls. The height map, again, that's being um, built using some external controls. Um, and the normal map here, uh, again, is being created inside COPS. 
So if you're new to COPS and wondering why this is so special, you can think of this as having basically a, a texture map creation tool inside Houdini um, that runs real time inside or in con close conjunction with SOPS. So basically it can integrate um, the creation of geometry and the creation of texture maps um, all at the same, same time. And these texture maps are procedural, so they're not being saved out. Um, for instance, this is not a file that's being recorded to disk. It can be, but it doesn't need to be. So this actually is referring, um, is being sent to the shader um, so the shader can pick up that normal map. The actual setup for the strokes kind of continuing to move backwards. Uh, it's basically you put in a curve and it creates a sweep based on that curve. Have a look um, at these nodes in here. It can show you um, various controls, things you might not have noticed. Um, for example, um, the wobble which pushes the stroke sideways, that actually happens as a distortion in a VOP here so inside uh, SOPS. That's not part of the um, of COPS or the shading network. Um, so yeah, just have a, a good look around inside here. It's all, um, it's all pretty straightforward. Uh, this thing down here is actually a, a bit of a, um, a leftover from the from stroke at 1.5. It does create the ability to kind of deal with overlapping strokes and kind of trying to delete geometry that's um, that's crisscrossing in there. Um, it works a little less well now that we've got lower resolution geometry in the scene. Um, but yeah, like I said, have a look inside, um, see if you can figure out how it works, see if you can make it better, break it, whatever, and uh, let me know um, what you learn and um, and. Of course, if there are things you think can be better, let me know. I'd be interested to hear about it. Okay, thanks.